Hi, I've got a very um, soft voice, but lots of big ideas. So. <laughs> um, who we are? Um, I'm Liz and this is Joanne. I'm head up the preservation lab at the Queensland State Archives. And what we do there essentially is that we are the keepers of the recorded memory of Queensland Government. Um, I think probably people envisage that we have acres and acres of paper. Um, that's certainly true to some extent. However, we have a really diverse range of different formats and record types as well. And in particular, we have um, a, quite a significant collection of architectural models. Um, and these present particular challenges for us. So the sorts of issues that we're facing is that they are generally made pretty quickly and pretty cheaply. They're kind of cheap and cheerful. The materials that are used in their construction are not what we would call archival by any stretch. Um, they tend to be quite large, quite complex, and are often quite heavy and difficult to manoeuvre. Um, they've often had interesting lives, like many of our records from our collection. They often are traipsed out and taken to neighbourhood parks, um, could end up at like a Westfield at North Lakes or who knows where. Um, and they often have evidence of that interesting um, past when they are transferred to us. <coughs> what we find is that they are incredibly popular. Um, in particular, um, they're of a lot of interest to architectural students and also town planners, people like that. Um, but they are very, very difficult to provide access to. At the moment, they're kind of sequestered into large oversized pallet racking in one of our vaults and that's kind of where they stay. Um, we often need really quite substantial lifting equipment to get them out if people want to come and see them. Um, we don't actually have a decent space that we can take them to for people to have a look at. And each time we move them, um, they become a little bit more damaged, so we cry a little bit every time. Um, it's also a significant workplace health and safety issue for our staff as well as a lot of manual lifting and things involved with actually getting these things off the shelves. So in essence the challenges for us are um, we want to make them accessible electronically which is easier said than done. Um, if we can do that the benefits would be that we would be able to preserve our originals better, it means less handling, less damage. And it also means that we could make them available to a lot more people and not just people who can make it all the way out to Rancorn, which is where we are, but basically anywhere around the world. So the idea that we've come up with is that we'd really love to have them scanned in 3D and then have some kind of virtualisation based on that 3D capture. The idea, the dream, I guess, is that we could actually have an immersive experience of them and that could be by anybody anywhere in the world. So what we want is something that's scalable. So we could, in my mind's eye, you could actually walk through, in a virtual sense, through the, the models. Um, you could also, there's also other, once we can get it captured and visualised, the, the applications of these are just huge. Um, we could do lighting studies. Another one I thought of the other day was that there's potential application for SEPTED for crime prevention through environmental design. Um, so you could actually have a look and see what the sight lines are like and what the lighting could be, all that kind of thing. Um, we could also superimpose things. So you could actually superimpose the real world or vice versa. You could have audio and a whole range of other kind of sensory experiences as part of that package. Um, so at the moment we've been doing the typical kind of government thing, I guess, which I call the mirror thing, which is we've been looking into it. And what we've found is that um, we haven't been able to find anything that's um, able to capture at the level of detail and at the scale that we would like. So we've seen examples where people have used surveying equipment to actually capture on a macro scale. So we've got things like the pyramids or Mount Rushmore or... Stonehenge and then you can go through and sort of have a 3D experience in that. And we've seen some basic kind of 3D scanning equipment which is great for stuff like busts where it's fairly flat and featureless. 
But what we're after is something at that sort of lower end of the scale, which has got a lot of detail. So we're really hoping that somebody will take up the challenge and be able to help us out. Now, there's got to be some questions for that. It sounds like a very exciting uh, problem. So one right up the back. Maria? <laughs> Thank you. Can you tell us what format you would supply things in? Is it something that's down on paper, or is it a 3D physical model that you want scanned? These are 3D models, so they're kind of like um, like marquettes. Um, basically, what um, architects do is that they build up like a, a 3D um, physical model of, of what things would look like. We know that we've seen examples where people apply CAD and develop 3D things and they're using that in real estate and all sorts of avenues. But what we're trying to do here is capture from 3D, like, like 3D original to 3D virtual in a one-to-one -one kind of scale. Hey there. Uh, just, I've got two questions. The first of them is, have you looked into photogrammetry already? And if so, are there any challenges like reflective surfaces or uh, difficulty in terms of actually getting a camera to see parts of the model. Um, like, and the second question is, what kind of format do you want the final to be? Like, does it need to be able to run real time on something like a mobile phone, or is it acceptable for the models to be uh, unoptimized and need like higher powered computers to to draw them? I think, yeah, potentially we might be looking just because of the size of the data. Um, we will be looking at something that's going to need a fairly high end computing to actually experience. But I am open to any suggestions that industry might be able to come up with in terms of, you know, what technologies we do for the capture and how that final product um, would look and work. And had you already looked at photogrammetry as a technique or is that um, something you haven't investigated? It's something that we've looked into, but we haven't been able to pursue anymore, so. Okay, cool. Any one in the front? Yeah, hi, Lachlan from Site C. Um, just wondering, you said significant. How many, how many three D models are we talking about? I here? think we have forty three. Um, forty three. Forty three. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and they range from thinking. this to this. Okay, so you're looking three D model, the actual three D model itself, potentially the real world environment as well. As potentially, tools. yeah. The sky's the limit, I think, yeah. on this stuff. As well as the yeah. internals, and then. Some have internals. <laughs> Although, if I can just add, um, for the purposes of this 12-week project, we'd identify suitable buildings and suit suitable models that we've got. There's varying levels of detail, so it's certainly not, it's, it's the intention that we prove a concept that it can happen. And then there's also broader application, as you can imagine, for a range of collecting institutions that might have similar types of objects as far as the application of this as a product for the SME at the other end of it. Yeah. Excellent. All right, thank you very much. Okay, any other questions? No, I think you agree this is a very exciting challenge. Very, very interesting. So do we have any uh, Tweety questions? No Tweety questions, just a reminder. Hashtag AQ Twig is the hashtag handle. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks Joanne, and, uh, and thanks Liz. So we